it, writing must be purposeful. It must be a choice, some degree of choice there um, linked to their interest. It must be desirable. You need to be tempted by it, don't you? That sort of temptation is there. Irresistible, inevitable. And by that, I mean it needs to be everywhere. Of course, we're going to write. That's what we do. And we're writers. And that sort of thing of it's not a shock. It's not a chore. It's not a duty. Let's write and let's be proud of it. It has to be exciting and how we do that, you know, each and every day, like throughout the year is, is hard, isn't it? But it's, it's not necessarily about what you provide. It's just about that mindset and that culture and you being that that um, you know surprise giver or something like that. And, and the, the opportunities they've got as well need to be exciting. It needs to be meaningful and hopefully that can be things can be meaningful um, the majority of the time engaging. Um, so they need to be engaged with it for, a, you know, like more than just a couple of minutes, like really purposeful, meaningful engagement um, is, is, is amazing to see and witness. Accessible to all of them at any certain time. It needs to be everywhere for me, every single, like I say, every single nook and cranny of your classroom. And it needs to be fun, that element of fun and excitement along the way. So communication is key and I love this quote, it says writing floats on a sea of talk um, and this is again linked to lots of high Corbett talk for writing um, uh, cultures and philosophies that if you can't say it then you can't write it. So first of all when children come in it's all about that that language, that rich language, and by rich language, I don't mean language plastered everywhere. I mean the, I mean the importance that you give to um, language and print and, and all of that sort of thing. We need to cultivate this and build up on what children already know. So when they come in, they're going to have, especially after COVID, and this is where you come in with your expertise, and they might have varying degrees of communication skills because maybe of more TV time and things like that. And obviously it's about you as professionals assessing where those children are and not assuming that they already know certain words and phrases that other children are quite used to and um, uh, that come naturally to them. We need to teach them new words and be excited by new words ourselves and them seeing us as a learner. We need to model how to recount and ask those questions out loud every day about language and just enjoy language um, uh, and communicate as much as we can. Uh, expressing yourself through writing is a skill, but not just a skill, it's a gift. And um, I don't know about you, but when you receive a handwritten letter um, through the post, which doesn't happen anymore, does it? Or when you write a poem or something like that, like that means that the, the, the element that the sentiments behind that is just so much more rewarding than something that's printed and quite generic. Children are primed to play with words, is what they do. They experiment, they have a go. They're not afraid, they've got most children, and not all of them, of course, but have this resilience to have a go with language and communicate um, freely. And it's about us adopting that and really, really taking them as far as we can go. So you've all done this, I've, all done, I've done this before, and you think aloud, you are thinking out loud as you um, design something for them, as you tidy something away. Like, where does this go? I've forgotten. And they are your answers uh, all around you. Uh, where does the next letter go here? Do I write it over here? And it's always brilliant, isn't it, when you get it wrong? Oh, I wish I knew another word for big. So you are doing all of that explicit um, for them to find the answer, them to understand that you're a learner as well and you're alongside them. It's not that you know all the answers, but that you are alongside them. And when you write, you explain the decisions that you're making in your head. And I love that because um, what it becomes, I've put here, is that inner voice because you are saying it and breathing it and, and you know, and living it all of the time. The children just hear your voice. And I'll compare this to having a nearly 18 year old who sometimes stays out late, later than she should. And she said to me the other day, Mum, I was looking at my watch thinking of, oh, shall I stay up half an hour? I stay out half an hour more. And I heard your voice in my head. And so I came home. And it is just that whole, I know that's a tangent, but the children will hear you. Like, what does, what does um, my teacher say when she's stuck? Oh, I know what she does. She does this. And so it's all about act, an act, isn't it? Uh, you know, like going on stage with the children, but lighting up their lives and learning alongside them as much as we can. 
before they can do any writing and before you pull them over and try and write a story with them or, or something like that, we all know, um, some SLTs might not know in my previous experiences in schools, but some, you know, unless they can use their hands and fine motor skills and gross motor skills, then they're not going to sit and sustain any sort of writing, be that letter formation or anything, because it will be uncomfortable. So we all know when children are using tweezers, when they're squishing that dough, threading pasta, um, or, you know, all of those, um, the nuts and bolts, I love that one, uh, you know, they are strengthening those hands muscles in order to correctly hold their pencil. And without that, it will become uncomfortable. OK, so this is the first part of call before being um, after being happy and settled. This is where we want to go in order that they become successful writers. So they need that opportunity to build up their physical strength and control in their core in order to develop that muscle strength. And also, you know, mo uh, gross motor skills as well, because it's all in the shoulder movement as well. So lots of vertical things as well, things on walls, um, painting on sheets, that sort of thing. So it's a vertical shoulder movement and everything is developing. And that's why until we've got that right, until they are ready physically, um, this is where we need to focus our attention until they've got that right. So when they're uh, swinging from ropes, rolling those tyres and climbing up things, they are building up their shoulder strength needed to become writers in general. OK, and now we can move on to map making when they're really there, then that experimentation phase comes in and you're probably doing that right now, aren't you? Um, within your classes, you are they are chalking, they are map making, they are spraying, they are printing, they are experimenting, experimenting at every single, um, you know, in every single opportunity. They are creating symbols and they know what they mean and they want you to know what they mean and they tell you what they mean and you, you know, praise them and all of that as well. And this is a Again, another you know, integral part of that process of writing is for that experimental phase, experimental phase where they mimic you, copy you and create all of these things. And they know there's meaning behind it, be that a, a picture, uh, be that a squiggle, be that you know, letters of their name. They are having a go at making those marks. Um, and then they may, you know, after those early mark making opportunities um, alongside your phonics teaching, they may then uh, develop their letter formation and you as practitioners and, you know, um, throughout the setting will uh, provide those opportunities to do so. And again, this is where your exper uh, experience comes in. If you've got any brilliant ideas or photos to share, then pop them in the chat. Painting over the words with water. Um, glitter writing as well, um, lots of pens and pencils and that sort of thing, having a go at writing their names as well, um, uh, feathers in the salt, um, different ice and sugar games as well over different paper. And then, like I said, the vertical as well, doing it upright and making, you know, letting them see and copy um, letters um, everywhere they go. So it moves on from mark making into letter formation. Again, like lots of things with their names on around it is all very egocentric, isn't it? They want to write their name, they want to recognise their name. So they start to, to write the um, usually their age, isn't it? And their uh, letters in their name. And when they've had a go and they're using and you can assess that you probably have been assessing where they're left handed, right handed and also the pencil grip they are using. Um, and again, that comes with practice and what feels comfortable comfortable for them, uh, you know, at the beginning. But what should what we shouldn't do or, you know, what should we um, subtly do maybe is not to say that what they're doing is wrong um, because that might, you know, dissuade them from writing and having a go in the, in the future. Um, but just to say like, oh, why don't we try this or, or like that sort of thing. And when you come out of this, I obviously share this PowerPoint with you. But mylittlelearner.co.uk has got a really good like sequential um, um, written formula and um, like ideas for each stage. And I really like the different stages and how you can persuade them that this way is more comfortable. And it's not necessarily, as you probably know, children will develop their own comfortable pencil grip. And it's not always the uh, dynamic tripod grip, as we um, know of that su success. It might be a, 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 you know, a version of that and it that may be more comfortable to them. So that's a little bit about pencil grip, but doing it the right stage when they are ready. You've probably seen this before. This is my little analogy of what Ofsted 
uses. Um, so when you are, so this is the riding the bike analogy, but I could probably make a, a writing one if I could get a different array of pencils. I'll have a go at that maybe. So you've got your bikes, you have you have them and you let them go and you just watch. And as practitioners, this is what Ofsted are telling us. We can watch them. We don't have to type up all day on an iPad. We can just watch them. And the Ofsted um, reports that I've read recently, it's all about practitioners stand back and watch their children learn and intervene when it is necessary and not all the time. And sometimes it's just brilliant, isn't it, to sit back and watch children have a go and get stuck and you know take those risks and you can just see them those eureka moments and so for me like the analogy is riding a bike some children will come in and they'll get on straight away on bike number three some children will you know start hesitantly and, and just walk around the bike and look at it and it's up to us to provide those stabilizers or that little push and a shove to get them going and as professionals you know exactly when and how to do that so um, that whole, are they ready? Where are they in relation to writing at this stage? Uh, some might be writing their name and address and telephone number and everything and granny's name and all of that. And others won't be so confident. And it's about stepping in and like and making that spark and, and getting them to have, really have a go and celebrate the process of writing as well. Again, I've used this before, but it's about that stepping stone, so making it sequential. So children might, you need to follow up a sequence. You have to, you can't usually miss one. But what you can do is assess where children start. So children might go on each stepping stone, for example, or they might settle in, they might do some uh, uh, fine motor, then gross motor and all of that. And then also children might come in and they might start later down the line. And again, that's your professional judgment of where they are in the writing process. But of course, they can always go backwards. And sometimes, you know, again, that's the, this is that repetition, that revisiting, that consolidation. And sometimes you assess as a professional after a half term or to say they haven't had any practice in the last week. Therefore, we're going to go back and we're going to really focus on here because that's where you get your buy in that element of success success isn't it for me and this is you know this is very free as well but for me these are the key points that I think um, need to happen those stepping stones that I mentioned and like I said some children might start further down the line than others but of course it's up to you to to realize where they are and where they don't need to go next so like I said Children who, who are yet to become writers need to be happy and settled. And you're probably at that phase still, you know, making sure they're you know, probably just gone full time. They're just staying for lunch because happy children, um, you know, they are more they're more open to learning. And, and if they're settled and confident, they're able to express their feelings as well. So make sure they're happy. Make sure they're settled. Then it's all about that physical, isn't it? Making sure their little bones are fused. Oh, and then making sure that their um, muscles are ready. Oh, it can, can, if it's someone got a question or do you mind putting yourself on mute? Thank you. If, if you've got a question, please interrupt me. I really don't mind that. Um, so the next one is make ram those random marks in the paint and the shaving foam, all of that sort of thing, and enjoy that pro process and the opportunity to, you know, express themselves. And that might be through art, art, art activities, crafts, and things they do in the construction area. So making all of those different marks on paper, on sheets, on foil, on blackboard paint, that sort of thing. Then they move along and they engage in their mark making more in their free time. You can see that those those elements of phonics are coming through. They know how to write their name now. They can recognize their name. So they they copy and mimic. And that mark making is starting to show variety and variation and form. Then we move on and they engage in that marks, the mark making and for a purpose, they want to convey a message and they start to write recognisable uh, letters and numbers and letters in their name. And next, moving on, they come and they, they ascribe meanings from the marks they make. They might write a short um, a story um, and yes, you could maybe read some of it, um, but they can read it to you. They know that their writing um, uh, means something and they want you to know what. 
Next, they write for a range of different purposes um, in all areas of the provision, and they rep represent some of those phonemes that they have been taught when they write. Um, then they start to segment those CVC words and CVC wo C words, and they use appropriate phonemes again to write words that match to the sounds that they know how to say. Moving on, they start to write those simple sentences and the element of success is there when they, you can read them as well. And they start to do that and they can read them themselves to themselves and others as well. Some words are even spelt correctly, those CVC words. Um, and then moving on, they start to use um, write more elaborate sentences and they start to spell um, uh, regular words correctly and some of those elements of narrative are coming in if it's um, uh, I don't know it's fairy tale that sort of thing um, or if it's uh, non-fiction so this is my sort of sequence of what to expect when but of course every child is different and every child um, doesn't necessarily follow that pace in that sequence all of the time they are individual children but with your support this is the these are the stepping stones that you can start and come back to um, at different points in the process. It's going slow. Uh, so your role, what is your role? So you inspire others as you, you must be inspired yourself as, as well. So and to inspire others to write, you must be inspired yourself. And I feel that sometimes um, I shouldn't record this, maybe this bit, but um, there's lots and lots of schemes out there, aren't there, that that might curb your uh, creativity and all of that. And it's just about you read it and you need to be inspired yourself to deliver something. And that's why I always choose amazing storybooks and things to teach to the uh, read to the children, because it just gives you a buzz as an early years teacher, doesn't it? If you think, oh, I can't wait to read that book to them, we're going to get so much out of it. They're going to feel that. And that, you know, your inspiration is going to be infectious in the classroom. The writing ideas and inspiration that you and your staff team give to children is central to their rising confidence and independence. Being a learner alongside children helps them to see what we can all get better at. And it's about that never stop learning element. And I wonder what this word means. And oh, I really need a word that goes here, but can someone help me, please? And it's all about you learning alongside them and that they have that time and freedom to consolidate and practice and really rejoice in the writing process. I've put my um, the big hotel bell there because I had a big hotel bell in my classroom and um, it was that, oh my goodness, you've knocked me off my feet. That is just amazing. I'm going to really the, ring the bell. If they'd written something or if they spelt something or if they'd posted me a letter and the next day I'm like, I looked at the post box yesterday who wrote this message and it would be that bell would ring and their face you know like they could have been like 12 foot tall it's just about you I can't believe that you and then once I did it I think I wrote something on the board and it was particularly good obviously it wasn't a picture because I can't draw so it was a sentence or something and I chose a brilliant word and I can remember um this little boy said to me I'm quite impressed, Mrs Underwood, with that word. Can I ring the bell for you? So, you know, it's just about that reciprocation of praise and just being, you know, just enjoying that that whole writing process and, and just sharing that success together. Adults should be interacting when the time is right and in a natural way. So you listen and converse and model that rich vocabulary and don't always intervene. Like I said, sometimes let them get stuck. Let them use the room or each other to work out their answers. Or even sometimes you can see something click and they've done it themselves. And that pride just exudes from them, doesn't it? Those children who haven't had the same life and educational experience as others, especially in COVID, like I've said, they will need more instruction and guidance than others. Now, it's not to say that you pull them away every opportunity for their play and stop their social skills um, developing, but you know when you will know when um, to intervene, and you will, you will know when to you know add an enhancement or support them, and just be there for them and model that language as and when is appropriate. 
when children are watching you write and model um, and you do it naturally and you do it with joy each day, then they are realising that there are numerous occasions and that that writing process is integral and it's a very useful skill. And the importance and coolness of language needs to be evident as well. Like, I've got a brilliant word that we can use today. Don't ever assume that, you know, they know something. Uh, always learn with them and they will pick it up and learn it too. Um, reading, obviously, reading is key to this process because the more stories you read, the more experience that they've got with imagination and fiction, then they can magpie all of those brilliant ideas and use them in their own minds, in their own voices and in their own writing as well. And these are my um, lockdown videos that we did for, like, for the children at home. And it's just my favourite part of the day it used to be reading to children. And I used to try and do it at least twice a day, just have those brilliant books and just add intrigue, tu intrigue, turn the lights off, put the music on and just read to them and their eyes lighting up. And I'm going to stop there. No, read on, you know, that whole thing of linked to language and all of that. It's just so exciting, isn't it? And um, a, a quote that I quite like here was, reading should not be presented to children as a chore or a duty. It should be offered to them as a gift. And sometimes when children do struggle, they don't want to read or they, they're hesitant to read. But if they see that you are you know, excited about that process, um, and then they will read and hopefully love that story time too. So when they're listening to stories, they're making those connections and they know that print carries meaning. Who doesn't love a gel pen? Oh my goodness. I am such, yeah, you probably shouldn't see my desk because it's quite messy, but it's got, I've got all my little gel pens. I've got my diary and it's nothing like that. Oh, making squiggles. Who squiggles when they're on the phone? Doodles and all of that. And that's what children love to do as well. So it's all about having those different opportunities around the setting and that you value that as well so there's a meaning um i love and you'll see later on i used to have like a, a board that was at height level and that was their writing board and they were in control of what went on there and the good pieces of writing uh, brilliant words that sort of thing and they would you know carry these things around and create notes for each other and messages for each other uh, with the new pens or the notebooks or the post-it notes even and it doesn't have to be, you know, it can just be some printed paper with lines on. And I'll show you in a minute. I've got some physical examples of, uh, of that sort of thing. So it needs to be your environment needs. And I'm sure it is. Uh, you have to send me pictures, please, of, of everything that you've got in your environment. It needs to have those opportunities for purposeful writing each and every day and in every location so not necessarily a writing area although I used to have one as well you know you have it everywhere you can write here but you can also write there that freedom and the fact that writing isn't static it can be done anywhere when children have access to a wide range of those quality resources, for example, different surfaces to write on, different implements to ma mark make, then they will write and they will mark make and they will doodle and they will do all of that. And with that comes that drive and that confidence to write within every area of the curriculum, within history, within the construction area, in PE, um, you know, with their gross motor skills, with their hands. OK, it needs to be encouraged at every step stage and children are writing in the moment because that's what they want to do okay so they're choosing writing in their in in their uh, continuous provision not always we all know the boys that go boys or girls that go to the bikes and um, but maybe add that challenge there of write down how many minutes you were there and give them clipboards as well it's all about you know tapping into their different uh, interests as well it definitely is I just said there about um, something at children's height so they can access and, and share and celebrate that writing process as well. So here's just a couple of things that I, um, I've done before. Um, clipboard challenges. So every time, so part of our morning routine, you probably do something similar, was that every child would come in and they would have um, a clipboard chat, uh, placed in their little space and that something would prompt um, them to write. So it would either be um, a photograph on the, on the 
board. It, 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 it would either be show me what letters you know of the alphabet and they would practice. They would practice their name. And then I'd um, have that as a piece of evidence that could be on a whiteboard as well. And you could photocopy that. But it also could be a clipboard challenge in the um, environment. So I put the pets there because one of our clipboard challenges um, was um, a, a, like a different cuddly toy. What could the cuddly toy's name be? And so they'd have a go at their phonics and write down Ted, Bob, all of that sort of thing. So they were, and then I'd open the envelope, a bit like one of those games you play at the summer fair, isn't it? No, his name was, and they have to read it. So all of those guesses and things like that, and like element of competition, healthy competition, of course. Um, so clipboards for me were everywhere with challenges on there and they'd bring them to me and we'd have gems in the pot as an incentive. And if the gem pot was filled up, then we were writers of the week and that sort of thing. And yes, all of these are fads and it didn't work in every cohort, I must admit. So it's about tapping in again to what the group likes as well and what their interests are in general. So clipboard challenges inside, outside, up trees, behind bushes so they can go and find them and either spell, write, doodle or mark make along the way. Different things here as well. You've got, you've got that vertical surface again that helps, especially at this time of year, that shoulder strength is integral. So it does help that you know, mobility for the shoulder that they are practicing on a vertical surface. Um, lots of days I'd cover a table either in um, paper or a tablecloth um, or a bin bag um, so they could do that. And so you could just make marks with either foam, pens, and have some phonic resources out so they can, um, you know, do some letter formation and um, down on the ground, the roll of paper. So they just rip some off so they can do story maps with that as well. Um, I had a reception year one class and my year one class had these dictionaries. Um, but even the reception were like, can we have one of our own? Because they had one each and they would practice in there writing what words begin with each letter and that sort of thing. So again, it was a place and I didn't discourage it, of course. So I ordered some more and they had their very own dictionaries and they would use them just to make marks in, just to write, but also to have a, an indication of that initial sounds as well. Uh, daily sign in. So instead of maybe numbers when you do the register or go and sign your name if you're here. And that's a sort of adulty thing to do, isn't it? So go and sign their name. And at the beginning of the year, this is brilliant because you can really see that progress. And it's just a little bit of um, wipe that magic board paint uh, stuff that you cut up. And so you can wipe it clean each day and they write their name the next day and you can clearly see who's there. And um, if you know me well as well, you know my lanyards. And if children are brilliant at writing the letter S or brilliant in having a go at mark making and showing others what to do, then they can be the teacher with me and they can have an ask me lanyard because they are the expert that day at something brilliant. So start with that spark, like I've said, we must reignite that spark as well at every opportunity through celebration, through new experiences, through new stories, through praise, through publishing their work online, sharing with parents or um, different teachers in the school, especially their year one teacher. This is when you have such a good opportunity to you know, keep that year one and reception, um, you know, that communication open so that you can say, I'm going to go and tell your next teacher that you, you could, you can know that you can write a sentence already, that sort of thing. That's amazing. And all children will become writers. Of course they will. It's just about what we do in that process and what that journey looks like. And we are the lucky ones who have paved the way and set those firm foundation for year one. Um, so creating this scenario and if you've seen my other work in of year one, you've probably seen this before, so do forgive me, but this is where some of our writing really did come to life when I would saw, and you know, it wasn't time consuming, I promise. It was just about that ambience, that culture, that ethos in the room that we are all authors and we're going to do some writing today and, you know, like and setting them free and seeing where they take it. So add props and sound effects. I'll show you in some in a minute and myster mystical music and, and different things and let them become immersed in that moment. So, you know, inspiring through a rainforest idea, so it would be like different things around the room. I just heard a monkey, quite quick, 
Right down monkey, that's what they're saying. And you could see, as soon as I was doing it, the next day they would do it. So their senses were there. They could see, what can you taste? Oh, it's, it's very damp, 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 right down damp and all of that. And you can hear them um, totally making fun of you and mimicking you. But you can, it's just joyous, isn't it, to see that, you know, they're, they're doing and, you know, exactly what you wanted them to do. And they're learning as well. And you sort of trick them into writing, don't you? And they don't realise they're doing it because they want to do it. Uh, you've probably seen uh, my take on the message centre as well, which is um, Greg, Greg Bottrell, who's amazing and he does so much work for early years. And again, I've used um, like the, the call centre. So this is all from um, um, YouTube. So you just put in things like that. And the, you know, the, the, um, the, the notes I had about being late to the hairdressers and I had to go to the dentist quite a few times that week. And yeah, I had a shopping list coming out of my ears. Um, I owed, I think, £30,000 to Tesco's because I had walked out without paying. You know, like it literally was like, goodness me, you know, and, you know, but it just set that scene of you are telling me a message. What is that message? Start writing it down. And of course, you know, throughout the year, don't stop that because it just gets better and better and better. Again, uh, mission space. Um, we so we all went into the hall, and we had uh, my space cadets, and we made um, um, uh, helmets, space helmets. Um, of course, we learned things along the way. But also we had those times to uh, write diaries home like, oh, what were you? What did you see? I saw a meteorite. Oh, my goodness. How are we going to spell that? I don't want to spell that. It's too long. Yeah, come on. We can do it. And they were telling that to me as well. Um, again, YouTube. And yes, you know, like it's a screen. And I know there's some degree of like hesitancy when it comes to screens, but we can go outside with it. We can we can go um, on a Disney ride like this one. To go above the clouds, so again, it's making them more afraid even to take off to a different place. And they just love that, don't they? They just love, like, where are we going today? Let's get on the plane. All of that role play. So it's not static either. So um, construction, so clipboards in the construction area. And this was part of our space station. So they were doing, for, you know, um, writing above their head, again, strengthening in their um, fingers. And also I took them to our local pier. We all dressed up and we all um, uh, sent postcards home as well to our families because we were on the pier today and you know from 100 years ago uh, also um you can't do anything can you without a uh, david attenborough focus so we did some green screening and we did some writing about being in the desert being in the antarctic and just all of those wonderful elements of writing came through because we had a video about it as well and we couldn't make the video until we've done the writing. So what facts are we going to do? We can't just make them up on the day. We need to write them down. And so all of that came through as well. So it's about those moments of um, inspiration that you give to them. All of these have got links on. So when you have this PowerPoint, just do press into them. I won't do them all now. Uh, there's obviously me and my Mary Nightingale uh, BBC News impression there with my two colleagues either side of me. And that came about when um, we were doing morning news or weekly news. And they were like, we need the news programme on the background. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. So we put a table up and normally it was like news from home. But obviously that evolved over the time. And we'd do news from, um, you know, news from the school. Guess what happened at dinner time? That sort of thing. So and then that turned into writing reports because what they do in their play in the afternoon was, have you got any news for tomorrow's morning's news report? You need to write it down because we need to shuffle papers. And yeah, that's what they do on the telly. So you have to do that as well. So again, like, you know, seeing writing as things that people use to record messages in order to tell them as well. A post-it wall or a message wall or write it on the message wall because I'm going to forget that sort of thing as well. And all of these, I won't, I won't press into them now, but my list of favourite sweeties, like all of that. So like really thinking outside those box, making it meaningful and purposeful. And uh, this one, like how to make a paper aeroplane. I don't know how to do it. Write the instructions for me and, and that sort of thing. So bringing things to life, bringing things on screen and making it really meaningful. Uh, this was my favourite. I've mentioned this all already, but I did have that actual post box, which I think is about 100 quid. 
it's nine, uh, 99 pounds something I think but the the endless amount of writing opportunities that they they did because they had this um, in the classroom at all times all year didn't move uh, obviously it was used for Christmas cards in, at Christmas time but I've written you a letter I'm nice like, to open them like you know I promise I did open them most of them like on a night but they wrote letters to each other as well and they wrote letters to people around the school um it has to say a message it, you know it had to be meaningful um but the writing the provocation of that in the classroom was massive and so yeah I definitely recommend that problem solving so how are we going to sort it are we going to call the police police for detectives you need your notebook out that sort of thing and also having a problem or a um like a barrier to cross well how are you going to do it how are you going to write it down like how are we going to do that so again making it meaningful and you've probably seen fx scary which is when you can have like the gingerbread man or a big dragon in your classroom be careful the jack and the beanstalk one petrified them i don't know why they were fine with a dragon coming in the classroom but they were a bit scared about the beanstalk which was a bit strange but um yes yeah, so we had to knock the beanstalk on the head literally and just have the dragon landing in the playground which was positively normal to them so that's fine so we had to write to the dragon and tell him to uh, leave us alone and this is a school not a dragon um, uh, home um, and uh, that voice app as well so I used to do that so I can remember I did it for a fairy tale and I recorded my voice um, in the style of a, a space alien I think it was and I am from and it, you know obviously it didn't sound like me it sounded like a space alien and I'd just play it and um, please children did you find any information for me and they had to write information I had to send it to the alien that sort of thing so you can be I don't know Darth Vader or you can be a little um a leprechaun a little elf um and yeah different things like that on the voice app the voice changer app it's called challenges things locked away as well like things that are you know messages in in boxes and things where they have to um, turn keys to open it and then read it but then also write something as well in that box and, and, and lock it away till the next day this is obviously a picture from a, a wedding or a, um, an anniversary but having a jar like this like leave me a message make me feel good and they are oh, you are so beautiful you get most of your compliments don't you from four-year-olds and not your family actually uh, but they also tell it like it is and say why have you got messy hair today or something like that I love them I really miss that I need all your funny stories because I've, I've I've run out of mine at the moment so do let me have them but so leave a message card or uh, send me a text message so like just little cutouts of text messages going hello how are you today that sort of thing and again post post-it notes um like i've mentioned the text that you choose oh my goodness that really can open a, op open a door and uh, forgive me as well and maybe we won't record this bit for most people but sometimes schools choose a book for like the whole half term and i'm thinking i, I you know in my opinion you just think oh like we could read loads of books by then you know and i'm really focused in on them and if you think um i am part of a book club actually with my friends and sometimes i read books that i wouldn't necessarily choose and i love them and um, but also i read books and i know from page one oh i don't really like that it's not really my cup of tea and i think children deserve to have that opinion of books too that it might not be their cup of tea and that they like something else so reading as many wonderful books as you can is it's really important i think to you know unlock those interests and see really where children come alive and the topics that they really um you know really enjoy and, and really want to dig deeper in and if you if you press on um some of these you'll go to my the different um the different um um powerpoints on my website so do feel free to go on to those as well that's absolutely fine So, and where the wild things are, that was a favourite when I was young, that sort of thing as well. So don't forget, if you go on to my website, you can get all of this for free. You should have the uh, code where you can get it all for free. And I've done some, I've done the Funny Bones one for this week and the Once They Were Giants and also Naughty Bus. So all of those are for free. And they're also um, like, you know, they prompt a conversation about different stories. So do feel free to load those. 
Um, the intrigue, so I used to hide things around the room and we had to get, for example, a word into our next piece of writing and it was a secret word. I've mentioned the bell before and also like that scratch card element of I wonder what words under here, who's written one and, and giving them that intrigue as well. Now, there's a time and a place for writing frames. I've said about large sheets of paper um, and, and, you know, like empty booklets and like lined paper but sometimes children love like a frame um, and especially if you've modeled something if they can model it then on the similar uh, like frame writing frame um, like a make a wish one for example that's brilliant and um, tishy lishy i don't know if she's um, done a lot recently but she would always have a basket of these my little book of uh, being Bre uh, my little book of the iron man my little book of rapunzel and that was you know, nothing inside maybe with some lines or something but their opportunity to write their own book and be that author again linked to their own interests so whatever was on the front cover be, could um, you know be linked to their interests story boxes around the room maybe with a different i don't know um a scary story in one with funny bones uh, masks from the uh, traditional tale maybe notepad and paper so for them to write their ideas down so uh, story boxes are a lovely idea as well and this is like going into like year one two really but don't ever assume that children won't use the vocabulary that you have chosen for them or that you love. And I've told you the story before about, you know, teaching the children a word a day. We try to do a word a day. And, you know, like as soon as I taught them blood curdling, everything like lunch was blood curdling. Uh, Mrs. So and so from down the corridor was blood curdling, you know, because they kept using it because they, they they'd heard it and they knew what it meant. So they used it and then we try and move on as quickly as we could and, and get different words into our vocabulary and you know describe the world around us. I'm going back into mark making now so like those first different you know uh, um, marks that they make the squiggles and like things on the ground with chalk so having those opportunities around the room like I said not just on paper but on blackboard block blocks or a big table painted blackboard paint um, or outside with chalk and um, having those opportunities. Then with those mark making, um, you know, with that practice, they could then come in to attempt to write within a frame, like I've said, or linked to their own experiences, like creating something. So again, a recount comes in or just like from a photograph. So we would have like a bank of photographs and the children would pick one. I'm going to write about this one today. Like literally had quite a few and they would write a sentence that would make me um, either ring the bell or I'm um, health and safety now. So I probably wouldn't do it or stand on my chair. They said, Thought, think that was hilarious. If it was brilliant enough, I'd stand on my chair, but health and safety um, made me change that to a bell, which is equally as good. And then with that comes initial sounds and keywords and them reading things um, and understanding that, you know, they can write them and copy them and that they stay the same. The, you know, those keywords are important and we see them quite often. And so therefore we can practice. And then you've got that whole like coming into year one um, and these are just some pictures of the top ones being uh, like the first day in year one and the second one being I think it's November. So again, you know, their writing is improving in year one and that's because I taught them in reception and we had a year of loving to be authors. Um, and we had a year of celebrating amazing reading books and we had a year of really talking about language and I did have Ofsted that year and um, but it was in the frame it was 2018 so it was just before and I think one of the comments was their language and their ability to have a go um, and I, I just think once you crack that you know not all children will find writing easy however you know the ones that write reams and reams and reams and reams of things that are like can't I read it all, Ooh. but that enthusiasm in the, is there. And if you get that right in reception, you know that they will fly. They will absolutely fly into year one. 
and this is Charlie in September and then Charlie in November you know just like having obviously you can see here that he was one of my brightest of course but I still you know that just goes to show because it's, it's not that I didn't have to do anything with him he still had his own journey to go on so which comes back to that whole thing of they're all on their own path and it's about us making sure that they keep doing that and keep gaining that confidence and this is was him in January um, with a focus on handwriting as well. So, but it's not just the what it looks like if you can read it as well. It's that voice of a writer because we talked, we edited, we changed things. That was fine. I don't want to use animal. I know, let's use creature. You know, that was very, very much an open part of our reception year of choosing the right words and really just celebrating that wonderful use of language. Uh, Molly as well and another child but then also this child here so this is year one but this child here did not get um, a GLD he did not um, get it due to writing and due to physical and like the, the strides he made in this is January so from September you know he we filled in those gaps we made sure that he was there when it came to phonics and stuff and so he still caught up um, again, like going, like we've said just now, is just going back to where are they now and what do they need? And they can still, you can still have high expectations for any child, no matter where their learning point, uh, learning journey begins. That pleasure as well of, of, of seeing a beautiful, that's Charlie's again, piece of writing that's well presented. Um, and I, th I think that's his, uh, Molly's. So this is, this is the hard bit for you as practitioner, and I know it's, and some, sometimes you don't believe it, but be confident enough to know that writing is something that children will choose to do. Even boys, even the most hesitant, not always. There's always, um, you know, different examples in, in, to the rule, but you just need to provide the spark. Like I've said, the imagination, which I know that you will do and the environment in which it will happen. And it needs to happen naturally. It needs to happen you know, in those sequences that we said, not pulling them over to you and writing if it's not something that they want to do themselves and seeing writing in your um, areas like happening everywhere, like on the fence, on the floor, making marks, doodling, writing letters, posting letters, sharing those messages is when you can step back and think they are writers and, you know, I'm, I've supported that. So uh, finally, for me, um, you be you become what you believe, and I think that's true of us as well as children. Um, and so I've just put five, uh, six. Can I count? I'll do a maths one next time. Six words here that begin with P. So the purpose of writing, the priority that you give it in every single day, not just a writing lesson, but writing is everywhere. Uh, the praise that you give each other, not just to a, children, a child. And I know you've got to be careful with praise, like, you know, them bringing you something. Oh, that's brilliant. You know, that whole thing of where do you take them next and just being. But they do need praise, too. So it's that balance, isn't it? Of oh, I love that. Go and put on the praise wall. That's amazing. Like, how could you make that better tomorrow? I think you could, you know, I'm just just sowing that seed of like what they could do next and you'll do that naturally in your lessons in your adult led sessions of the day um practice give them time to practice um and you know consolidate and repeat 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 let, let them do things over and over again um you can see that their confidence soars when that happens publish it let parents see take that tell them to go and see the head teacher tell them to go and see one of the children in year six go and show so and so i know that he likes um farms because his dad works on go and show him that that piece of writing you've done um, and all of that hopefully will give them the power to become amazing authors of the future. So celebrate writing at every stage. Give them choice and decision, even if that is quite guided at, at some points because they need that instruction. But that's up to you as, you know, as practitioners, as a professional and your teams to make sure that you know where they're going. A child must know that they are a miracle and that's not just with writing as it is with everything but these are things that we already do and these are things that gets children loving to learn value children for who they are and their starting points and i think that's really important that we sort of you know understand where they've come from and where we need to take them and i love this children are you know people to be unfolded okay we haven't got to change them they are people themselves humans themselves adults themselves and we've got to unfold them and see where life takes them 
I love that and idea. They must climb their own mountains. And, and that sort of means for me that they've got to want to do it. You can you can push them, shove them, you know, give them a, a I don't know, a, a, a train, a, a vehicle to get up that mountain. But if they don't want to go, it, you know, that's half the battle for us as practitioners and is, is to watch them want to get to the top, even though it's not easy. Just that resilience and that determination is key. Um, if you want to change the world, pick up your pen and write. And I think that was that mantra of we're never, you know, conveying our messages, writing to Greenpeace, uh, writing to manufacturers, writing to the president, uh, that sort of thing. We want to, them to know our message. What shall we write? And having that understanding that communication is power at every step of the way. And a writer is working when they are staring out of the window. And I think that's true. That's really true. I'm doing one of my MPQs at the moment and I just like look at the blank screen or my notepad thinking, oh, my goodness. And I do like just stare out here at my really long grass that needs cutting, actually, and just think, I read that, you know, you need that sequence to happen in your head. And so even if they are looking like they're daydreaming, they're thinking of all those wonderful opportunities that you've given them and and that you've all those seeds that you've sown. Um, and they, they, you know, that's part of the process is that thinking and take up time, isn't it? So hopefully that's lots and lots of different things that you have, um, you know, you either, either do already or that you um, will com incorporate into your, um, everyone's saying thank you, can you hear it? Shh, shh, stop. Um, so yeah, it's just about planting those seeds. I'll send you this, um, I've put this uh, PowerPoint in the chat so you can have that. Like I said, there's some live links there so you can have a little dip into all of that sort of thing. But let's use this chat here just to share our names and to share different things along the way. And um, yes, just um, and everything that you do for um, writing yeah. any brilliant idea. I did this today. It really worked so we can have that sharing community. I think that's really important that we have that. So if there's any any brilliant ideas that you've done today or recently, any wonderful sequence or pencil grip ideas. Um, does anyone want to say anything? No one, no one's everyone's too shy. So we can keep this, um, um, yeah, we can keep this um, uh, chat open. We can share ideas. I've put the Padlet in here as well, so we can keep putting ideas on there. But what I want you to do is just, just you know, be secure at that process. We're three weeks in. Um, I know Lester's a little bit more because you've been in term longer, but you're three weeks into term. They are still doing that happiness and settling in stage. OK, and you're probably, who started phonics already? Is any ever, yeah? Yeah, most people started phonics already just to have that little bit of routine and they're all in full time. Yeah, yeah. And you're all tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like I said, I'm not in the classroom now, but what I can do you do for you is find things and research. And have you got anything on this and like build that community of, of all of us? So please do ask any question. Uh, like I say, if you've got any ideas or like, please share your photos of what you do. I know, Beth, and you're really good at tw tweeting, aren't you? So you're, lots of yours are on Twitter and, and everything that you do. But I just love to, to keep involved and see what you do. So do share some uh, different elements of writing and the processes that you use in your school, because it would be brilliant if you have that moderation opportunity together again uh, and all of that. So um, thank you so much. Um, I will love you and leave you and let you get on with your evening. I know that you're all, um, yeah, wonderful um, early years practitioners and hopefully can I come and see you all soon because I miss being in the classroom. Yes, thank you, Sapna North. It's, I'm, yes, I miss you all. I need to get in. I'm coming to next week. No, this week. Oh, goodness me. This week I'm coming to Avanti Court. So I'll see you there, everybody. And also um, Caps Croydon. So I'll, I'll see you there as well. So I can't wait to come and see your early years um, children because I'll be in the day there in the day as well. So I'll come and see you and I'll just I'll probably just be in the corner with some Lego, if that's OK, um, just playing with the children because I do miss that. That, you know, that was the highlight of my career was just being a reception teacher. I absolutely loved it, but I know also how tired it makes you. So thank you for listening. Go and have a wonderful evening. I will put the PowerPoint now on here on this chat. 
Um, but like I said, any questions, then please, please ask. And then let's keep this community of early years writers and inspiring those writers of the future. And we can share ideas together. All right. So have a lovely evening and I'll see you all soon.